Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm Fahim Chandrawala. I work for in core mathematical engineering department here at Wolfram. Today, we are going to go over financial data fades in Wolfram language, and we have this platform called Wolfram Finance Platform, and it's something similar to in philosophy, like programming lab and Wolfram desktop. It's, but it's more focused towards finance industry. If you are in an investment firm or some, your students are doing financial data, doing statistics on them, then this is a good solution in that case. And so, what we'll go over today is the current functionality of Wolfram Finance Platform. Then we'll discuss about the upcoming data feeds, that is more resources that we'll hook up to for financial data. Then targeted audiences. So it's basically the current functionality right now is we hook up to Bloomberg Terminal. And what it is is just Bloomberg supplying all sorts of data. They have more than 30 to 40,000 financial fields and hundreds and thousands of instruments that you can get data for. And when you get finance platform, you have CUDA functionality also. The CUDA link is obviously available throughout our product line, but here, the CUDA also hooks up to financial derivatives. And as we go further, we'll go over Bloomberg Terminal, Bloomberg Data License, and Reuters. These are the three different APIs or resources that you can get data from. The targeted audiences usually, it's a very niche product in a way. Uh, it, it's useful directed to both financial institution and academia. And we do supply, provide premium technical support if you have Wolfram Finance Platform. I think you receive enterprise support for that. And then we also have a website, and you can go to that website and get furthermore information for sales and other things. So these are what we'll cover as we go along. Current interface, what you can get now. Then we'll discuss about the new data feeds, the existing entity value interface, entity deploy, which is not finalized yet, asynchronous execution. This is a way to receive data from these resources, and we'll cover that. So. Right now, this is the product that is out there. You can use it with Bloomberg Terminal. And so this is what it looks like right now. You connect to a resource. Over here, it is Bloomberg Desktop API, which is Bloomberg's real-time data API. If you have a subscription for them, you can hook it up, and you can actually get market data, real-time market data with this. And so you do Market Data Connect, you get a Market Data Source. And so you are in business to actually get data. And with Bloomberg, you have different aspects of getting the data. You can get snapshot, which is basically one value or multiple values, but it's just static. You, it's the latest, it's here. So this is how it works. So you do a Market Data Sure. Is that good? Or bigger? Oh, 200. OK. Wow, OK. <laughs> oh, it looks very interesting on my screen, but OK. And so here, here's the syntax for it. Market data get, 
you want a snapshot, here are the instruments, IBM equity, Apple equity, fields are current market capital and loss price. So these are the fields you can get. And the output of that looks something like this. Initially, it's somewhat, oh, what is that? That's too much. But it has all the values, and you can, we have these, and it works really nice with grid. So now you have something that is, looks rather nice as what is the ID, market cap, and so we have that functionality. Then you can get historical data. Market data get, we give it a date range, instruments, fields. So if I were to evaluate that, and we get a market data table with all the information there. Then we can do also real-time subscriptions. And the way it works is, first you start the market data, you create an object, event delivery pass through, so everything that goes through, it's all the data. And the instrument is, Euro, USD, currency, bid, ask, last price are the trigger fields. So your data is going to get updated when either of these three fields are updated in the market. So here you get the subscription. And then there is another step, market data subscription starts. So, okay, we started it. And now we can look at a particular field. So, and I can do dynamic of that. And so you'll see it updating the second of that. So this is, currently this is available. You can buy it, you can use it, and people do use it. Okay. So now we are going to get into what's coming. So these are the new data feeds, Bloomberg Data License, Reuters Ultra Performance UPA. Um, it's also called UPA. So why Bloomberg Data License? Why do we introduce that? So the idea is that the licensing terms from Bloomberg Data License, and licensing is an issue in financial industry, so I have to uh, talk about it. So here, the Bloomberg data license, you can get it in corporation, and you can deploy it in your private cloud. And in your company, folks can use it. Bloomberg terminal is tied to a machine. The data cannot leave the machine. You cannot share the data with anybody. You can't have automated reports and send it to folks in your company. You cannot do that. And Bloomberg is very clear when you have the Bloomberg terminal, when you start it, it's very clear that that's the extent of your sharing of data, the machine. But with Bloomberg data license, it's more relaxed because it is not real time and company-wide access, and it's compatible with Wolfram private cloud. So you can deploy it in the, if in the private cloud you can access this. It works over HTTP protocol. There is calendar data, which we'll talk a little bit later about. Okay. And Reuters Ultra Performance API, it's still TCP protocol. They have, Reuters have their own protocol of exchanging data between your computer. Um, you get historical data, snapshot requests, real-time access, similar to Bloomberg, but perhaps a little bit cheaper. I'm not sure on the prices of that. So you've seen the old interface of market data table, market data get, but we wanted to integrate it in existing functionality. So entity value framework is pretty nice for that. And Entity, if you have ever used entity value, it works really nice with time series and it returns quantities, which is pretty useful when you're coding. So entity framework is there. It has been there since 2014. 
we might go over the documentation of that also. But, okay. So this is something what we have been working on. And here's the syntax for how to get the last price of Microsoft and how it looks in Entity Value Framework. So here I can deploy it. And I get a nice quantity, and it says US dollars. Then you can do it with entity value of multiple fields here. And here's Apple Equity, and you get a simple list. And previously, if you remember, when we were asking for historical data, we would get a table, a market data table. Now, the first step, whenever you get a historical data, there are too many numbers. It's not very useful. You're going to do something else with that data. You're most likely going to use it. So here are the two time series. You just get time series directly. You don't have to go through an extra, extra step to do that. And you can do a dateless plot of that. So, so pretty quick to do that. And you can get it in different forms also. So the entity value has annotations. And what that means is this. So here I'm giving multiple instruments, Microsoft and Vodafone. And the fields are last price and ask price. And so it's in an association. and. Everything is properly labeled. And if you look at the data set, sorry about this. There is some issue over here where it thinks Microsoft queries the internet for it. But it's, it makes it slow. But here it is. So it looks pretty. You can make really nice reports if you're using other if you're using a report mechanism and wanted to present it. Now, this we are using with Bloomberg Terminal. Is it quite necessary to repeat this Bloomberg Terminal? It is. It is. And currently, that's the way it is. But we could think about it. Sorry. So then you would be depending on implicitly figuring out what resource it is. Because when we'll go further, you'll notice that PX last is unique to Bloomberg. So you have to say this property belongs to Bloomberg. Otherwise, um, you probably could, but I'd like to move on for now. And here's the property association where if you're just interested in okay and here we are grouping with fields and all right so now we'll talk about, so that was Bloomberg Terminal, now we, which existed in Market Data Framework. And here we are talking about Reuters Ultra Performance API. So I'd like to show this particular diagram, how we interact with all these external APIs. A lot of time, these APIs are in C. So you go to Reuters and they say, we have a C API. You go to Bloomberg and they say, we have a C API. And how do we hook it up to Mathematica? And we use this technology library link. And it is well documented, so you guys have access to it also. And often in financial industry, what happens is you have your own C solutions, C++ solutions. And if you want to get all that data in Mathematica, you'd use either um, Wolfram protocol, I think it's symbolic transfer protocol, WSTP, or Wolfram library link. 
And uh, basically, you create a DLL, and then you talk to that DLL. The kernel talks to that DLL. Right, so that was the what I wanted to get over with. And again, here we have this particular thing. It's nothing different than what we were looking in the previous slides, entity value. Now, here you'll notice the instruments have changed. It's no longer MSFT US equity. Now, this becomes Reuters specific. And so this is called RIC, R I C, Reuters code, Reuters instrument code, I think it stands for. And you can evaluate that, and you'll get a quantity. And quantities are useful because if you're working with different markets in London and in US together, you want to know otherwise you'll get confused. Vodafone London equity with Apple US equity, one is 200 pounds and other is $100. So it's useful to have those things. And another example of, here I'm doing Vodafone and And going forward, we are doing something called asynchronous execute. This will become more interesting when we talk about Bloomberg data license. But the idea is simple. It returns immediately. You don't wait for it. So the syntax is very similar to URL submit, which was introduced in 11.0. And it is asynchronous execute of entity value. Then, because it's happening asynchronously, you want to have handler functions, data received and handler key. What it will do is we generate an event called data received. When that event is generated, we do a print. But what is going to be printed? That's defined in handler function keys. So data, when we receive data, that's what's going to be printed. So let's execute that. And it creates an asynchronous task object. And if you have ever used URL submit or URL fetch asynchronous, which has been there for quite some time, you'll, let's see. I'm sorry, what? Yes, it will be across, yes, yes. So if you look at the messages, here's the message at 5714, that's what it got printed. Let me delete that. And this is a bit more involved example of it. So let me explain what I'm going to try to do here. I'm going to receive bid and ask price of a particular instrument and plot it. That's, that's the short term. And I'll define the handler function. So whenever an event is received, this is my handler function. This is going to get executed whenever an event is there. Here it is, collect data received. All I'm doing is, if the field is asked, append to an ask list. If the field is bid, append to bid. Um, nothing fancy. And so here I'm asking for entity value, Reuters UPA, entity property, F1 is, when I'm going to evaluate, it's going to be bid, and F1. I'm going to call this, when the data is received, I want to execute collect data received. And because that's blue, that means I have to evaluate that first. OK. So, and continuous goes to true means I want to stream this data. So it's not just going to do one go and stop. So 
So I've started the stream. So the ask is two twenty five over here. Oh God. Okay, I, I know what mistake I did. I asked for Vodafone. The markets over there are closed. I'm gonna skip this. I'm sorry about that. That's not nice. Okay. Okay, we are just simply going to forget that happened. So now we are going to go back to asynchronous execute and say, Oops. all right. This Particularly, now we are talking about Bloomberg data license. I just have to tell you this. If I were to execute this particular call, It takes about two minutes. What is happening is it goes to the server, server takes time, and it's about two minutes because Bloomberg Data License API is a slow API. It's not real time. So here's I'm just going to make a quick handler function, as I've spoken about. And here I'm going to execute this again. Is similar syntax to you all submit, and it returns immediately. So now you have a scheduled task object. And we can Yes, right, so. OK, so here's what you're getting. You're getting a particular message. Code 100 description data is not available yet. Try again later. So we are just going to keep trying again. And so what is happening is this. This is how the Bloomberg Data License API works. You ask the API. Bloomberg servers that you want in Microsoft time series. Immediately, you'll get a response saying, OK, your request was good. Here's the response ID. And the next time you want the data, present this response ID, and we'll give you the data. And so we give them immediately the response ID. And then it tells us, as you just saw, try again later. So we want to do that asynchronously. We just don't want to keep waiting and hold the kernel up and not be able to do anything for two minutes. So we just do it asynchronously. And once the data is there, then you're not holding up the kernel. You have already used it. So here it is. So I've started it. And now, looking at the dynamic, the data is the time series. and. you have successfully received the data. And you can get a 
quick time series for it. OK, now this is entity deploy. What happened, the one thing that Bloomberg does provide you is that you can have a calendar data. You can tell it, the server, you can make a request, one-time request, put it on the Bloomberg server, which says, give me the last price every day. So you don't have to wait at all. You just come in in the morning in the office and you just retrieve that task. And this is what you'll create the task as. Entity deploy. It's very similar to cloud deploy, which lives in the cloud. Here it will live on the Bloomberg server. Here you're asking, every day, give me the Microsoft's closing price. In this case, it's PX loss. And well, this is a time, time series over here. So date interval is 2007. So this is year to date data. And do it daily. Every day you want this data. And when you get this data, print. And what kind of data you'd like, task data and response data, similar to what we saw. Now, I had already run this, but it will remain there between kernel sessions. So I had run that earlier and had saved it. And is it? So it's not responding. I was told to hook it up with the wire, and I did. And this is the result. Anyways, so the idea is that you will receive uh, the data, and it will live in a file. And every time you open it, it's not going to hold up anything. You'll just receive data from Data License API. And it will be as rich data as you get from Bloomberg Terminal. And so I'll give you why I was doing remote into a machine on the Wolfram headquarters. It's because all this thing requires a lot of machinery and lots of authentication, and they don't like people using laptops. And then, so as I was saying, the licensing issues are quite hard with these financial data. Anyways, OK, I, that's all I've got. Well, thank you for your patience. <laughs> thank you.